it was quite an interesting thing, pastoring a church in America and then coming to pastor a church in Scotland. And, and the church mm. in America was almost felt like a church plant type context. Yes. And then coming to a very uh, established Baptist church. And they're very different dynamics. Yes. And um, yes. I think, I thought I knew something about leading because I'd led a church in America for seven and a mm. half years. Mm. But actually, I came to Scotland and realized I knew nothing. Mm. So in a sense, I had to learn again how to lead a larger church and how do you lead a church where change is... is harder work yes and i think i feel for the church you know a young guy comes in tries to change mm. things you're busting their heads they're busting your heads there's a lot of grace that needs to happen yes uh over the years but i think um the the, the lows are probably those mismatches where you want so desperately want to see things happen mm. and you feel like everything's working against you uh to from it and that can be a lot of frustration but then learning actually how do things actually work. So you've got your head, the ideal of how things work, but learning how to affect change yes. is growing in wisdom. And I think that's mm. why uh, a reading a book like yours, Ray, is so helpful. Mm. Actually, there's sociological things you need to learn about how yeah. things actually happen. Nobody likes change. No, no, yeah, yeah. It's not just a Christian issue. No. Nobody out there likes change. <clears throat> no. So then what's the wise way of affecting change? And I've had to learn the steps it takes to influence people to lead towards significant change. And things mm. can change, mm. but uh, you need to be wise about how you go about doing it. Mm. And I think some of the lows are doing it the wrong way. Mm. And wisdom says, okay, I need to know how to do this. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's very helpful. Michael, what are your highest highs, lowest lows? I I have to agree with, with, with Paul in many ways that... Uh, one of the great challenges for me over the years is wrestling with the whole issue of leadership. Mm. Uh, mm. It's uh, something that we didn't particularly focus on in seminary. And, no. and to be honest, yeah. when I came into the ministry, I don't think anyone had really spoken to me about it. And no. then suddenly there you are in the hot seat and people yeah. are looking to you for answers. And I, I expect probably my some of my lowest lows are my own failures. Mm. Uh, mm -hmm. When I was in a situation I've never conceived of, never understood, you have to make a decision. Later, you look back on that and think, you know, maybe I should have used different words. I should have taken a different action. And coming to grips with that personally, mm. um, I think when I went into ministry, I initially was under the illusion that I would get everything right. Okay. I think yeah. that was great, you know, the illusion I had. But I think coming uh, over the years, you, 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 you realize, actually, you are going to make mistakes. People will disagree with you. Mm. Um, sometimes it will be because of your own mistakes and failures. Sometimes it is just because people disagree. Yeah. But I think coming through that personally has probably been my biggest challenge because mm. I think, as you said earlier, I love to be approved. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I want, I'm there for good people. Mm -hmm. But then sometimes you have to confront them, and that's a difficulty. Probably the, the greatest high for me, highs, have been when you see someone in your fellowship and you feel they've got potential mm -hmm. and you invest in them. And it takes, I, I find really to help somebody, it takes years. Mm -hmm. You know, there, there, there was this concept, you, you put them through a six-week course and they've got it. Well, that doesn't happen. Reality is it takes years. Mm -hmm. But to me, one of the greatest joys is when you see them suddenly begin to flourish. Yeah, yeah. And then when they begin to take a leadership or they go out preaching and then actually they grow in that ability and, and others appreciate it. To me, that's a tremendous joy yes. to see yeah. others yeah. succeed and go forward. Yeah, no, that's very helpful. I think one of the things that's so <clears throat> thrilling is actually the Lord gives you an idea and then you mm. start uh, casting that vision and it's shared by more and more people mm. and 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 then the things completed so we just moved building you know last summer and to think how long it took but also just the stages of people coming on board getting excited about it so it wasn't uh, my idea it was a shared yeah, vision. yeah a shared vision mm. yeah and then you see the work done with all these people excited and god gets the glory as yeah. You know, as as we all work together for a common goal. 
Yeah. And uh, the fruit that we're seeing uh, from making the building move has been huge. I mean, in yes, terms of yeah, reaching brilliant. the lost, actually, location matters, I've <laughs> discovered. Yes, location. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. So yeah. we've moved from a back alley to the main street, and probably we're seeing another 150 people since last summer turning yeah. up okay. because of the location. Yeah. So, um, yeah, but, but the thrilling thing as a leader is, you know, the Lord gives you something and you come convinced of it, you share it and you see other people owning it and then teams working together for the glory of God and, and something that looks impossible is done and you say, well, thank you, Lord. I mean, that, yeah. that's the yeah. high of leadership. Yeah. And it's not the sense of, oh, I did that. No, it actually, yeah. look, the Lord did this yeah. amongst us and amazingly used a bozo like me to, yeah, yeah. to, yeah. to begin to throw yeah. a, a pebble in the water and start things happening. Now, that's exciting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I found that in my very first leadership meeting, the senior leader who was mentoring me said, Ray, never think the church has got so bad that you can't make it worse. I was <laughs> welcome. And uh, for someone like me who is, you know, glass half empty and then some that was like okay i can only ruin this so that the high for me has been things are yeah. somehow not completely messing it up not completely <laughs> messing it up i start but then to see god at work think yeah. oh he's used me to do this or he's yeah. used us yeah that's been very high i think for me the the low has been the issue of learning to manage disappointment and, and and managing disappointment on a very regular basis. Disappointment with myself, my lack mm. of ex- experience or knowledge or mm. inability to take things forward. But also disappointment, you know, not getting overly disappointed with Christians, okay. not getting cross with them, not getting frustrated, not beating the sheep regularly, but learning to say, this is how it is. You need to learn to breathe encouragement all the time into people who do feel disappointed, disappointed with their lack of effectiveness, that perhaps disappointed with their marriages or their children or their jobs or, and disappointed with the church. Mm. Uh, we all hope that we'll be heaven on earth and then you, you go along track and go, there's no heaven on earth yet. There'll be Christians disappointed even with a, a growing church. For me, one of the leadership lows is not a spike low. We've had a few of those things tragically going wrong, but the general... Things go south. Leave them alone. They go south pretty easily. And learning to realise you need energy through the whole of your leadership life to breathe energy into discouraged people. That's been the kind of... I I didn't know that low was going to be there. I thought, you know, people will be full of the Holy Spirit and they'll... But then they need just constant encouragement. So the the highs of things happening that I never thought were going to happen, the lows was just how much energy... As a leader, you have to breathe into everybody most of the time. <laughs>